Switzerland, our beautiful country, with our democracy often regarded as a global role model. You can swim in our lakes and marvel at the glorious mountain landscape. We seem to be doing well on our small island of progress. Well, but if we consider what it takes to maintain this seemingly intact spot, the backstage is less exemplary. Our CO2 footprint is alarmingly high. And if everybody would live like us, we would need approximately three planets. Let's zoom out a little. There we are, the Earth, at the sweet spot between the sun and the moon. The perfect conditions to enable fruits, nature, life to be and to flourish, and us to establish and grow as a civilization. Beautiful, isn't it? The issue is, we have built our whole economic system, so the way we organize ourselves as human beings, on the principle that resources are endless. And of course, it doesn't really work like this. My name is Amanda, and this is Lorraine. In the next 10 minutes, we will tell you how and why we launched an initiative that is transforming the economy of Switzerland into a circular one. A circular economy. What is that? Let's take a look at this arrow. What does it evoke in you? Something positive, right? This evokes growth, progress, wealth. But if we put it this way, it doesn't feel the same anymore. There is a boundary. Nature is made out of cycles. There is the water cycle, the one we all learned in school, the nutrient cycle, the biocycles, Everything works in a closed system. Guess what does not follow this principle? Us, our economy. So of course, as you can imagine, we need to start thinking ahead and gradually diverge from this linear path onto a more circular one, one that follows the natural cycle. And this is where circular economy comes into play, an economical model that takes less resources from nature that produces things in a way that everything can be introduced back into the system, so nothing gets wasted. Of course, this requires a profound change, not only in the way we produce, but in the way we consume and live. But how to achieve an efficient transition of such a monster economy, one that is fast as time is running and carefully designed? We believe there are two elements to it action and collaboration. The truth is, the problems we're facing today have become way too complex, and they're beyond a single individual, organization, sector, or government to solve. They require new approaches, new ways of working together. They require collaboration. Collaboration may seem an easy concept to follow, right? But in practice, so difficult to truly apply. This is why six years ago, I committed myself to this cause. And with three friends, we created a neutral space where people from different sectors and backgrounds could come and bring their ideas and projects. We wanted to create a community of social entrepreneurs and innovators. And we joined a global movement of makers and doers called Impact Hub. Now, if you happen to work in the world of social entrepreneurship, you might know about the challenges to reconcile impact with profitability. And we were seated with this exact same question as we knew the importance to engage the private sector as a key actor in changing the way our economy operates. And last year, something game-changing happened that would put the Impact Hub on a new mission. We had the chance to meet a foundation, the MAVA Foundation, who introduced her a circular vision for Switzerland. And circular economy seemed to be exactly what we're looking for, a new way of looking at our economy, one that decouples growth from resource extraction. And MAVA saw in us a crucial player to lead this needed transition. And we were so excited. It was like discovering a great dish, circular economy, and figuring out that all ingredients were at our hands. 
Um, so what we needed to do was to put our head together and create a recipe, design a roadmap that step by step would leverage all important actors. And so we did. So challenge accepted. In three years from now, Switzerland, as one of the most polluting and consuming countries in the world, should have evolved into a pioneer for circular businesses and ideas. So we identified four drivers as crucial to make this transition happen. First, the entrepreneurs. We believe that fostering entrepreneurs and ideas in that direction will have a major role to play in the transition, as entrepreneurs are fast and passionate, exactly what this transition needs. So we opened the call for applications, for circular ideas, projects and startups to apply. To be honest, I was pretty curious to know if there were any of these in Switzerland. And within a few weeks, we got 130 applications, ideas tackling the textile industry, for example, with clothing sharing platforms, the plastic problem with smart collection systems, or even our monetary system with, for example, the introduction of a local digital blockchain-based currency. We were so amazed about all these ideas and we selected 26 out of them, the ones we thought was the biggest impact potential. So what do we do with these startups? For those of you who don't know what an incubator is, basically, we provide them with all the support they need to grow. Experts, network, visibility. But what is most important to us is to foster them to collaborate and so be the purpose-driven and collaborative leaders our world needs. So let me share one startup example with you. This is Jojo, a very funny guy if you happen to meet him, that set himself as a goal to revolutionize the toilet industry. Yep, identifying that what we like to flush away every day in the sense of out of sight, out of mind, is actually a treasure. So Jojo built a compost toilet. Not that innovative, you might think. But he does not only focus on bringing them to festivals, he brings them into houses, into buildings, into cities where actually the majority of people live. So instead of this precious resource going into these complicated treatment plants, <laughs> going into these complicated treatment plants, he collects it and brings it back where it belongs, into the fields where these exact nutrients are lacking and even produced artificially. So with his project, Jojo is closing a resource loop. And this makes so much sense, right? Like Jojo, many more change makers are seeking for support and partnership to help them grow. So we thought, what if we could connect two startups with established businesses? What if their technologies could be applied by big players in order to accelerate the transition? So we needed businesses, and this is our second pillar for the transition. The great thing about circular economy is that we can go to companies, talk about sustainability using their same language. Risk reduction, cost reduction, risk mitigation, huge innovation potential. So we launched a business lab where 30 Swiss SMEs are being supported to develop circular business models, transform their product designs and processes, and learn about the huge potential of this framework. In order to achieve this, we immerse them into our spaces and networks where they can find the right partners, for example, a startup and technologies that will help them close their resource loop. So imagine we're there. There are more circular products on the market. Businesses are transforming their processes. How to ensure that the people, the demand is following? third driver of the circular economy transition, civil society. Students, parents, and each and every one of us that consume, live, travel, work. So how to involve people? I remember four years ago, when I announced to two of my best friends that I wanted to become vegetarian. You should have seen their reaction. It felt like I had told them I was quitting social life. No more dinners, barbecues, Christmas traditions, and so on. In this reaction, I faced it with a lot of decisions I took for this same reason. 
going zero waste, stop flying, at least in Europe, etc. The good news is, these two same friends today are joining the climate demonstrations and rethinking themselves their consumption habits. Not because of me, but because of probably the fourth or the fifth person that told them exactly the same thing. People can inspire each other, and this has a great power. So we started organizing events, five per month, one in each, each Swiss city involved, around circular economy topics, to inspire people. And what we were amazed about was the extraordinary high response rate, with sometimes more than 100 people showing up, willing to become engaged. So we started using these events as a platform to show great examples from businesses, startups, and to connect these actors. The more events, the bigger the community, the bigger the skill set, the ideas, the movement. Still, this is not enough. Now, we need government to set the right frame and create real incentives for businesses to shift their processes and products and for consumers to make the right choices. So we started working with policymakers. And here we have the chance that a partner is collecting all the learnings from our work with entrepreneurs and businesses to then make uh, policy recommendations. And finally, what we do is what we bring the whole community together. So entrepreneurs, businesses, civil society and policymakers across two major, major events in Switzerland where they can inspire each other, share the lessons learned and also to push the transition forward. To sum up, the question whether this transition has to happen in a bottom-up or in a top-down way is not a question to us anymore. We need to tackle it at all levels, at the same time as we are aiming for systemic change. Today, we told you a story about a Swiss initiative, but in fact, it's a story about impact through collaboration. There is nothing new, nothing revolutionary. It's a, an approach that can be replicated and where every one of you has a key role to play. Like a cyclone that is forming, you start to see it. You don't know exactly its intensity or what direction it will take, but you notice it. Very quickly, if the cyclone starts to engage more things on its trajectory, it becomes more powerful and grows. The closer you get, the more you get attracted and automatically start to engage. We want the circular movement to cross boundaries and sectors. We want that it transform into a force that can change everything for a better future. So keep an eye on your weather forecast. We are on our way. Thank you. Thank you.